and welcome to The Debrief. This is the show where we meet the creatives who are shaping Detroit. I am your co-host. My name is Seth Ressler. And I'm Becky Scarcello. And today, Becky, we are talking about uh, artists who are involved in different disciplines, right? This is something that we see often. And I'm always curious about somebody who, you know, works in more than one medium. What skills cross over? Like, is that hard or is it easy if you're working in something? I'll give you an example. I, I come from a radio background, right? I'm a radio broadcaster. Now we're doing things like uh, podcasting, things like this. And this is out there as a video series. There are some things that cross over quite a bit because I've done interviews for radio and now we do this. Uh, but there's some things that are very different. Uh, and it's it's hard. I feel the same. <laughs> I, you know, going from a tour guide to mm -hmm. a podcaster, like you're talking to groups, you're sharing stories, but a lot of different skills. So yeah, absolutely. Yep. So uh, the guy that we are talking to today is a, a former musician. Well, I, he's probably still a musician, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? He, yeah. he, he's still working in music, but he has crossed into uh, filmmaking, uh, and he is making uh, commercial films for you know companies. But he has also made a short film called Hacko that uh, is well. We'll give you a taste. Here it is. Yeah. Uh, the setup for this is that this is a guy who has come in late to a staff meeting in the office because he has gotten into a car crash. Uh, and here's what happens in this <laughs> dark, short, funny film. Vernon! Nice of you to join us. Forget to plug in your alarm clock. No, I was at an uh, intersection and a truck came to Right. Me. Well, that seems to be everything I have here. Oh, yeah. I almost forgot. After decades of service, I need to announce to you all that effective at five o'clock today, Mike Valdez will be retiring from Pack Company. That's right. Thank you, Mike. And of course, Cheryl insisted that we have a small gathering for you after this meeting. And then, he's off to Tampa. Sarasota! That is all. I want to welcome to the show the musician turned writer, director, and producer. He is a uh, guest who uh, was in the band The Satin Peaches, which uh, signed to Island Records at one point, shared a manager with Oasis, and now he's making films. Uh, Ryan Tibbs Weiss, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, thanks for having me. Yeah, thank welcome. You. So tell us a little bit about your creative life. You were a touring musician with a band. You've had some... I guess not so stimulating jobs along the way. And then you're into commercial filmmaking. What was that sort of path for you? Yeah. Um, you guys picked my favorite scene, by the way. Uh, oh, good. Where, <laughs> where, where I, Dan I has... Sarasota! <laughs> where Dan has like a really Buster Keaton type of physical sense of humor where he explains what happened to him at the intersection... Um, you know, that wasn't written. That's just his sense of humor and uh, how we collaborate so well together on things. But um, yeah, so I, I was lucky enough to be in a great band, The Satin Peaches, with a bunch of my best friends uh, straight out of high school. And um, we we put our stuff on MySpace, as you do in the early, mid-2000s. We got a call. Um, long story short, we got sent over to the UK for the next couple of years and toured the US and the UK extensively and played, you know, festivals, Lollapalooza. It was wild. It was crazy. We were young. Um, 2008 happens and kind of shakes up what, a, what it means to be a young band. Um, and then life kind of sets in and, and then yes, uh, working jobs that, um, you know, were shocking or, or, or grounding, uh, to say the least. Um, and that kind of inspired what Paco has become. Um, it was, you know, only a year ago we were playing these amazing festivals to thousands of people. And now I'm working in a produce company at five in the morning, stacking boxes of carrots. So, um, I think that's kind of where Paco inception was, was formed. And, uh, and then along the way, I found parallels in film and um, decided to kind of take those roads instead of uh, music full time. And 
and uh, still actively playing and writing, but but film is definitely where I've, I spend most of my time now. Great. Yeah. So what skills would you say helped you from your touring musician days into filmmaking and what things did you really have to kind of start over and learn new? Yeah, I don't know. I kind of realized that on the road I was, um, I was the producer of us getting to the show or mm. getting a hotel room or getting paid um, I, those Dad, skills, basically, yeah, it's like you were the adult <laughs> in the group. Sounds like, uh, I don't know, har- hardly the adult, but definitely getting us from point A to point B, um, kind of, I, I don't know, I, I fell into it or I took it on and those skills followed over into, um, you know, a lot of the producing that I've done in commercial and narrative work to actually get a project going. I mean, you know, with film, it's, it's teams of 10, 20, 30 people that have to move together in order to, for anything to be created in bands. It can be a little bit smaller in songwriting. It can be individual. Um, you can even do, you know, I've done a few records alone, um, playing multiple instruments. So there are things I picked up, but there are a lot of things that I had to learn for sure. Yeah. And where do you get to the point where, you know, I think a lot of artists go through this, like when, Am I valuable? When can I start charging for things? I mean, you started a business creating commercial films, right? Like, how did you gain the confidence in that new creative endeavor to start charging people for it, I guess? <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I think I took every opportunity that, I, that I was given to me or, or any opportunity that um, was there, uh, regardless of maybe what it was paying or um, what it should be paying or if there was a favor to be done, I kind of did favors and I still believe in favors a lot, especially creatively. I think, you know, um, I don't know, back scratchings where you kind of get in favors, returning them and asking for them is where you want to get um, in a creative market. In my opinion, um, I always try to extend those favors that were given to me and I try to remember everyone that I get you know, from people that have helped me unpack, you know, if I can loan them something I have or help them produce something or offer a base camp at our studio or whatever it is, um, you can't do it alone. So. Yeah. I'm a firm believer in that too. So you really just built up your, your resume too. You built up your projects and then it just started to speak for itself. I'm assuming. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I I'm grateful for every, every, email or person that reaches out, um, that wants to do a project with us. And, um, I think the charging aspect, I think the least about, but I guess I start charging what we are properly charging when we get too busy to do favors. So, you know, three people be... asked us for this. So can we get, you know, everyone paid on this one? So Yeah. Know. Yeah. And what about the reverse? Like since you've been in, in filmmaking for quite a while now, are there skills that you've learned there that make your music better? Yes. Yeah. Surprisingly, I thought stepping away from songwriting, was going to be detrimental to my process or the songs that I was writing and stepping away was a really good thing. Um, it, I wrote uh, like in, you know, final draft, like screenplays and I'm writing in a different way than I would lyrically. Um, I'm reading more screenplays. Um, and I don't know, all of that kind of came back in terms of storytelling at its essence. Um, for songwriting too. It had, it had a, I think a positive effect on it. So uh, although my, so, cho- like, my chops are a little worse, but, you know, uh, give, me, give yeah. me an example of that. I mean, are you now writing a song where you start, you know, internal, uh, you know, basement night, like, yeah, fade in. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't know. I just think, I don't know how to explain what it did, but it just made me look at characters differently or who I'm trying to describe in the song or, um, you know, writing a screenplay or, or a short film or whatever, it's, it should be as much white as possible. You, you should be able to say 10 things with one sentence, right? Or try to write mm-hmm. economically. So getting, squeezing more out of a sentence, um, that's what I've kind of learned how to do and bring it back over to songwriting, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah definitely. So you composed the music for um, 
Paco too, right? I didn't compose for Pac. Um, oh, okay. But I, for other film projects? Yeah. Yeah. I did some music for like a few films and some TV things um, that have gotten placement uh, over the years. But um, those have just been through connections and other friends who are music editors out West or whatever. And, you know, they have a, have a show or a movie that they're working on and there's a tip song that might be a good fit. Yeah. And they, you know, I get that call or something. It's fun. That's very, I'm cool, like, yeah. this is, this is it, you know, like licensing is where it's at. If you're, if you're a musician, I'm like, We've heard I, that spent a few times. Much, I spent too much time on the road uh, and not enough time trying to license my stuff. So. Yeah. Yeah. So what about working? So Dan, your partner and who plays the lead character, Vernon in yeah. Paco. So you're working together on this film. What's it like working with another musician on a film? Is that easier or Do you guys have your own little language yeah. that you can speak in or, or does it mean that you are unfamiliar with certain concepts because. Ah, it's so interesting how, how alike we are in a lot of ways because he's always been in music successfully and films successfully. And I've been in music a little less successfully than he has and films less successfully than he has. But, um, but yeah, we can talk on several different levels and we're also pretty different people too. Um, so we kind of yin and yang in a lot of ways and cover a lot of ground together. Um, so yeah, yeah it's, cool. he's, we're, it's easy to collaborate and we can kind of work off each other's body language. So we have to just point out who is in your background there for people who haven't seen Pat Co yet. Uh, yes, Francois he lives. You kept one of your main characters that um, you got to watch the film to see what yes, happens there. Absolutely. <laughs> so just to wrap up, what other advice would you have for um, other creatives doing what you did and, and transitioning into another art form? Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing is to understand who's doing what you want to be doing and learn from them, work with them collaborate with everyone, offer up favors, offer to, you know, work for free because you'd never know what it turns into. Maybe I'm not saying you should just work for free, but I'm saying, <laughs> uh, you know, put yourself out there and, and those opportunities start opening up and then you become the guy who gets the call. So. Cool. All right, Ryan, we've got one last question that we ask everybody who comes on the show. Here we go. <laughs> Okay, Ryan Wise, writer, director, producer, has a new short film, Paco, out. Name a Detroit creative everyone should know about. Uh, my Detroit creative that everyone should know about has to be Jeff Milo. And uh, he's a, uh, a man about town. He's a writer, a journalist, a radio host, um, everything. He, he's, he's been a part of... Uh, a lot of creative people's lives for a long time. And, um, and I think everyone should know Jeff in town. Well, very cool. Well, Ryan Tibbs Weiss, uh, thank you so much for coming on. People can go see the film. It's uh, about a 15 minute film, very dark, very funny, uh, and, and absolutely enjoyable. Uh, it is at packco.tv. People can find it there. Thank okay. you so much for coming on the show and telling us a little bit about it. And I hope we get to hear oh. the rest of the story. If you keep, if you keep adding on. Oh, you will. Yeah. No, there's, uh, there's more in the works for sure. So great. All right. That's it for us here at the debrief. I'm Seth Ressler. I'm Becky Scarcello. Lots of places you can find the show, including Spotify, Apple podcasts, YouTube, and others until next time, Detroit's moving. Keep up. <laughs>